Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? So today we are going to be trying to troubleshoot and fix this 4-in-1 KISS ESC that recently went out on me. So now keep in mind that this video is not going to be like a how to fix this 4-in-1. I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm just going to use some basic knowledge that I have to kind of troubleshoot this thing. If you guys want to find more videos and things like this about how to kind of diagnose and fix these boards, I'll link a description down below. It's for a channel of, I, I don't really know how to say his name. I think it's uh, like LeView FPV. I, I could totally be butchering that. Sorry if I am. But check his channel out. He goes in a little bit more into depth of how to fix a lot of your electronic components. But um, I have been kind of fixing my own stuff on my own for quite some time, so I do have a lot of the equipment and things to use to fix this properly. And I'm gonna go over that right now and quickly show you guys the things that I use to basically fix and troubleshoot some of the boards that I do have. So let's go over the items that I am using. So the first item I always use is this little soldering iron here. Um, I do have like a bigger like desktop hacko setup, but this little TS whatever it is 100 I think is what it is. This guy does well for pretty much all these jobs. It just has a little cable like this that I plug into a lipo battery. Also, I will be using my multimeter. This is a good like. EX Tech multimeter. I've had this for a very long time that my father got me a while back ago and I use it for basically all my motorcycle stuff, everything. It's a really, really good multimeter with a ton of attachments on it. It's pretty cool. Uh, tweezers. Always use some tweezers. I am going to be using this here. This is just like your normal rubbing alcohol that you could get at a store. I use that to kind of clean up any flux or anything like that. Uh, Q-tips, you want to always make sure you have plenty of Q-tips. Some solder. Uh, this is me. This I use this solder pretty much on everything. This is a uh, 3.3% flux. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's like 60-40. I don't even remember. The, the label's been ripped off right here. I can't really see what it is and I may or may not use this but this is solder wick. Solder wick if there is anything I need to clean up off the board okay maybe I probably will use this for sure because I am doing like some uh, PCB like some some mounted you know, yeah it just you get solder wick. Solder wick cleans up everything for solder if you need to resolder if you have too big of globs of solder whatever it may be solder wick helps. Um, one thing I'm going to be using is this. This is looks like uh, drugs, but it's not. <laughs> it, I just thought of that. I'm like, this is kind of bad to be showing on a video. But all, all it is, it's, it's a syringe filled with uh, flux. So this flux allows me to basically cover the board and get the solder kind of melted again and allow me to pick up the chips and things off of this board. It is very essential for doing these kind of jobs. Now, let me tell you, these ESCs, I just know this from some of other ESCs, some KISS ones that I have been trying to get the parts off of for, they require a lot of heat because this copper dissipates so much heat. It, it's crazy how much heat is required to get the FETs off and some of these small processors here. The smaller components like the caps and the resistors and things, they'll fall off right away. But pretty much this, this whole chip, the big portion of this chip, I wasn't able to get that off of a donor board. I think it might be actually like glued on and then soldered on the sides just so they could like accurately do it and I can't get the glue to separate without damaging anything else. But even that being said, the processor chips on the top as well as the FETs are very, very hard to get off. They require a lot of heat. And when I say they require a lot of heat, I use something like this. This is a hot air gun. Think of it as like your heat gun, but with a very, very fine tip. So that way you could get very close to the chips that you need and it produces a lot of heat. So that way it's able just to like melt the solder just in that like certain area where you put the flux around the chip. This is very, very crucial for doing these jobs. Now this is like a lower like entry level one of these. They have like stations that get up to a lot higher heat than this one. This one's not bad but there's some that get it up to a higher heat as well as have little suction cup things so you can pick up like 
little chips and stuff like that. And then I don't have a vise or anything. I'm just going to be using this little octopus thing. This is from Hobby Creek, I believe. This is the one that they make, and it's nice. I have all my extra components and things that are in here. You could use it also when you're building your quads. You need an extra helping hand. There you go. So that's pretty much everything I'm going to be using. So now let's go into actually trying to see if we could fix this board. And like I said, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. And I apologize for this probably being a little bit longer video. I'm going to try and cut out as much of it as possible to shorten it up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to check between the plus and minus on these FET. So every FET basically has a plus and minus and um, of the continuity basically to these. So there's like a resistance of plus and minus. We have an audible little tone here that we're going to be able to check each one of these guys out. Okay. So on the minus side, uh, we are having an issue right here. I am guessing the MOSFET here because you can see the traces coming through here, connects on the side through here. So I'm guessing this is a MOSFET that we need to look into. So we're going to replace this MOSFET. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is get our guy over here and we are going to hook up. Let's see, that was that guy. So we are going to hook this guy up here. We're going to put some flux onto the board here. So these require quite a bit of flux. Like I said, it, it gets... It gets hot, but it dissipates the heat so good. So I put quite a bit of flux, and I'm really going to have to heat this thing up. All right, so while we're heating this thing up, I just wanted to talk about my experience so far with this KISS stuff because, as you guys all know, I flew KISS for a long time, and then I moved over to, like, basically the Beta Flight stuff and messed with that and Butterfly and Helio and everything. And one of the main things I noticed was that when I would go fly something like, say, you know, Butterfly or the Helio stuff or whatever it was, I would always kind of be like, ah, you know what, like, no big deal. It's just, it feels the same as Kiss. They're getting better and better. It feels really close to it. It, I, I like it. And I think the thing was is that I was always looking at it as the aspect of I was flying kind of both at the same time, and I didn't really dedicate myself to one. And I found out recently from my last video I did where I was flying and doing the Rubik's Cube trick video, that is a pretty locked in quad for me on the Helio board. And I have just been flying this Kiss build now for a few weeks or something, or I don't know, I've been flying it, I've had some time on it, but it, I've only flew the Kiss one. I feel, this is what I feel like. If you only fly Kiss and you go backwards, you have to go backwards to something else and when you do you find out how much better kiss feels over everything and i know the pricing the pricing is what kind of kills everybody on it but when you go from like like a kiss kissed out quad and then you feel anything else like you could you could totally feel the difference but yeah that that's the thing you have to go reverse you can't just like compare it side by side. Fly KISS for a while, then go back to it, and then see how everything is. Okay, I'm going to have to probably speed this up, because this is going to take a while to get this thing off. Like I said, it requires a lot of heat. I had to do this off camera, and you can see we ended up getting the MOSFET off. Now what I'm going to do is just fill this up with solder, because we're going to clean everything up with a solder wick. And you got to be careful when you lift these pads, because you don't want to like pull off any of this from the actual board so if you pull these pads off it is pretty much useless so this is where the solder wick comes in handy we are just going to move this around this board here get everything nice and clean what we do now is just take a little alcohol onto here and we are just going to clean up all of this and make a nice clean surface for our new MOSFET. So here we have our new little MOSFET on this chip. I am going to be laying down some flux right now and we are going to be getting this new chip ready. 
to be laid into place here. That is pretty good right there. We're gonna let everything cool down and set now and we are going to plug it in and see if the light comes back on and if it uh, was just a MOSFET. Now if I have done everything correctly, we're gonna get all four LEDs to light up. If I don't do everything correctly, we'll probably get some magic smoke or something and this board is done. So fingers crossed. All right, so only those guys lit up. Nothing's, nothing's getting hot on here. So the only other thing I could think of is maybe one of these two processing chips, one of them went out. Which one? Not sure. We'll remove one at a time and see if something gets fixed. These are very difficult to remove without ruining any of these other small little components on the board. I'm not really looking forward to doing this. Success! <laughs> board is, uh, or that little chip now is soldered into place and boom we still don't have the third blue light uh i guess i could try this guy here would be next i am running out of things that this might be this is all resistors these are caps everything looks okay right now we're just guessing we're guessing with some available parts we have all right so quick little update i installed the two chips onto this board for some reason i'm not sure what went on but two fets ended up burning out i was able to get the logic board off of here um, after removing everything it is very hard to get this board off you can see there's also like two points here and those two points go to the bottom here I believe that's what holds the board in. I never like noticed this. It was very hard to get this board off. Um, I'm gonna try and get a replacement board off of my donor ESC. See if we could just put that on. I gotta replace the two FETs and maybe this will work. So far this is a complete fail and I gotta see what I could do to, to keep this thing going. All right, so in conclusion, until I could get another board off of another the other donor 4 and one I think that this is going to just be another donor 4 and one for now. Um, I got to, like I said, replace two MOSFETs now, the whole logic board, and still don't have any sort of solution on how to get another one of those like logic boards off. They're so hard with having those two pins underneath that kind of like suck it onto the board. So it's hard to heat everything up without having all the other components move everywhere. Yeah, so I don't have enough time to do that right now. I do have an extra forward one, so I'm not out of like KISS stuff yet or anything. I do have like replacement parts and everything for it. It's just uh, I wanted to see what it's like to replace the actual chip and everything on that foreign one. If it is replaceable, then... Yeah, that'd be good. I love the 4-in-1 because I don't have to use any capacitors or anything on my quad. But if this is going to be a thing that, you know, if you kind of get smack pavement too hard or something like that or whatever, this is going to be an issue. And, um, yeah, I'll see what I could do to maybe, like, dampen the the actual KISS 4-in-1 a little bit more. I'll use a little bit of uh, some dampening on the standoffs. That's all I could really think of, just to give it a little bit more cushion. But... Yeah, I'm going to keep using it. Like I said, the feel is better than anything else out there. And I will get back to this project eventually. Right now, I just don't have time to keep playing with it just to get that one to work when I know I have a replacement. But we tried, guys. And, uh, yeah, we we know what the, the problem was. Probably something on that logic board gets messed up. I don't really think it was the MOSFETs too much because I replaced them. And th that was a lot easier. And I still had an issue with something so... Had to have been something on the other side where the, the logic board was. So, um, that being said, I will see you guys tomorrow for another little adventure. All right, I'll see ya.